Hey peeps, welcome back. So welcome back to another episode. Today, oh, this is going to be a good one because I have been, I'm reading a lot of different study books on narcissism, narcissistic moms, emotionally immature parents, like just tons and tons of research uh, to help you guys and help myself too understand uh, why our moms were the way they were. And it has been an eye opener for me. Also, just going through therapy has been really good. And that's something I want to start off with before we even dive deep into this episode is I am a coach. So if you need a coach to help you through the next phase of this craziness you have figured out, like, yep, I know my mom has these issues and now I'm I'm ready to break that chain and do some things different, I'm your girl. Like, look me up. We can do one-on-one coaching, move you to a different place, teach you some new good tools, habits that you can do to break free from the emotional trauma, maybe physical trauma that you've gone through with your mom. Um, but remember that this is these episodes, these are from my opinions, my experiences, and also some of the work that I've done as a trauma informed coach. And so um, it's not to be mistaken for therapy. So I just want to make that really clear is I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist, I'm a coach. And I have studied and will continue to study these issues until the day I die, probably, because I'm passionate about it. I I have um, experienced it myself, the changes that can be made. I can tell you without a doubt, when I started working on being a trauma-informed coach, it has immensely helped my relationship with my daughters, with my grandkids, with my husband. We've been having these huge breakthroughs, great conversations that we normally would never have had without really diving into these subjects and figuring out like, oh, that's why I react the way I react. Now I get it. And so I believe that anything you can do to really help emotionally with your journey along with spiritually with God is a double whammy. Like it is so beautiful because we are body, mind, and spirit. We are not one thing. Like we are many things in this body. We have many emotions, many things that, that, um, comp that just, comprise of who we are. And so I think that, you know, God has taken me on this journey to help other women because I have experienced these things and they very much impacted my life, but they don't control my life anymore. So today we're going to talk about what is the difference between an emotionally immature mom and a narcissistic mom. Oh yeah, everybody's got their ears on now. They're like, what? (laughs) Let's do that. Now, there are two different kinds of moms. So no matter, your mom could be a combination of both of these. My mom was. So no matter what kind of mom you currently have or had, if she's no longer here, we have a choice to call it out and leave them behind if necessary in that craziness. We don't have to play that game and we also need to learn new habits within ourselves. Starting off, (laughs) did it feel like a whirlwind (laughs) growing up with your mom with all her emotions? Because I know it did with me. I never knew what to expect from my mom and it was like from one minute to the next, she was Betty Crocker mom and then she was psycho mom (laughs) and I was just like, an audience for it. I'm like, what is happening? I couldn't bring people over to the house unless they knew how my mom was because it was too embarrassing to know if I walked through the door, was she going to be baking cookies or was she going to be screaming and yelling and have everything out of our drawers and cupboards and we have to do a deep clean day because that's what's in her brain on that day. And so, um, It was just exhausting to try to figure it all out. 
So imagine my surprise when I started studying about toxic parenting and I realized that my mom was emotionally immature and she was a narcissist. Now, I didn't even realize my mom was a narcissist until I started reading about it last year. I just thought like she is just, she's bipolar, she's crazy, she's, which I hate using that word because it's not like she wasn't crazy. She was very unsettled. She didn't know how to control her emotions. And also she never went and got help for it. And it wasn't really offered in the 60s. Um, Not in the way it is now. There were things there. They were also giving highly explosive drugs to women that were not good for them. And so they didn't have a lot of knowledge about it. I would say there's, there's still some disconnect. I'm still seeing today when women are going in with postpartum things and the doctors are like, oh, there, there, you'll be fine. It's baby blues. It's like, can we dig into this question a little bit deeper? But I digress. Like (laughs) we could go on a whole subject of that and maybe I'll do something on new moms and depression. But when I started reading books and when I started studying for my own um, coaching certification, it made so much sense, but it also hurt to see that the characteristics were so manipulative and having to really get to that place to know like the one person that's supposed to really be safe for you and loving towards you is actually hurting you. So first I want to just talk about the differences and keep in mind too, there's always forgiveness in the middle of all of this, not just for the other person. It could either be for yourself or on those rare occasions with your mom too, if she's willing to do the work and change her behavior, I would say nine times out of 10, they're not. And so if your goal is to get to this happy spot with your mom, you're going to exhaust yourself because she's probably not going to be about it because a lot of times it runs so deep in them that they don't even see it or they know it and they don't care because there's some other stuff going on there. So I'm here to show you how to make yourself better in a healthier spot, setting boundaries, really protecting your heart, your mind, your body, your soul from people that are hurtful. And those people can be relatives. This is the thing people really hate to hear. It's like, it's your family. You should be nice to your family. No, (laughs) not when they are being very manipulative and hurtful to you and toxic for you. You will never change the direction of your family if you keep allowing these people that are damaged in when they're not willing to do the work to make themselves better. All they're doing is bringing you down. It's like crabs in a bucket, right? You think like if I climb out and then I carry a crab with me, he'll, he'll come out with me. No, they're going to pull you all down. The negative people will pull you back down into the bucket. You won't get out of the bucket unless you climb out yourself. That's just the way it is. Unless I'll make a caveat here. Jesus can come down and do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to heal that family, he will. So is there always hope? Sure, there's always hope, but you better protect your heart and your body and your surroundings because more times than not, and I've told these stories before, I've brought my mom in to this beautiful family that I'm now creating and she was like a bull in a china shop. She would come in and destroy everything around it and then be like, what, what I do? What, uh, it's all, it's fine. You know, what are you so upset about? Why are you so negative? Why are you, why are you so sensitive? And it's like, you made everyone cry. You made everyone unhappy. And it's like, no, that was just them. That's not me. So you didn't change her behavior. You brought her into a beautiful spot and you damaged it. So you have to set those boundaries up. It doesn't mean you don't love your parents. I say this every single time. I love and loved my mother. And I will continue to love my mother in heaven But did I want her in my life on the daily? Absolutely not. She was not a safe person for me. So please know the difference. Okay, so now I'm going to just go through real quickly 
difference between an emotionally immature mom and a narcissistic mom. Okay. Emotionally immature mom. She can't control her emotions. Oh yeah. It's just like whatever they feel it's on their sleeve, right? They got to like spit it out, say it out, scream it out, cry it out. It's they're super, super all up and down on the emotion scale. They can't control them. And they just, they'll tell you that I can't help it just the way I am. And it's like, oh, you could help it a little bit. Especially if you're mature, (laughs) you learn. I mean, that's like a six-year-old, right? A six-year-old throws a tantrum because they don't know how to ask for what they want. So they just scream it out or cry it out or they hit something. I see my (laughs) three-year-old, my three-year-old granddaughter, Cavi wears her emotions on her sleeve. It's like my oldest grandson is so gentle and, and like he has a passion about him, but He's, he's very even keeled and my, (laughs) that second child, my granddaughter will come up and just pounce on him. And we're like, Cabby, why'd you do that? And she's like, I I just, I just felt like she was like, I'm just raging. Like I just needed to hit something. And, and he just will sit there and be like, Cabby hit me. And we're like, I mean, you know, the old me would say like, hit her back, (laughs) but He's so gentle and I love the way he handles her emotions and he will ask for help. And because he has a stable mom, she is there with a gentle spirit to say what's going on instead of like, oh my gosh, and raging with her emotions, right? And just screaming at everybody, which is what my mom would do to us. A narcissistic mom, she has a big ego. Ooh, she has a big ego. Like everything is about her. She is amazing. Like she's the first one that will tell you how amazing she is. <laughs> Big ego. Emotionally immature mom. She does not care about your feelings. Mostly because she's more in tune with her emotions and her feelings. She doesn't have time for yours. This was my mom all the time. My mom wouldn't even ask me how I was because it was like when she called, she was screaming on the phone that something was immediately needed help with that I needed to help her with. No one else could. I I needed to do, and I needed to drop everything and go there right then. She didn't care if I was sick. She didn't ask. She didn't ask how I was. She didn't care about my emotions. A narcissistic mom, she makes you feel guilty to manipulate you. Oh, you can't come today. Yeah, well, that's because like, I, I really needed you to be here because X, Y, Z. Um, oh, what do you mean? This is more important. Like I'm your mom, like these guilt kind of things where they try to get you over and distract you from the things that are important to you. It doesn't matter if you had an important meeting, maybe you needed to go to the school for something. Maybe you had a meeting at work and it's like, they're going to make you feel guilty to manipulate you and make you come over and do what they want you to do. And they'll do it through sickness. They'll do it through an emergency, just anything like that. But they know what they're doing. If you parent your mother, oh boy, yes, a hundred percent. I was the parent in the relationship. My mom couldn't make decisions. This is where her high emotions came in. Everything was dramatic and she would just fall apart. And so I would pick up everything and be like, okay, rationally think things out at like eight years old, 10 years old. Like, why was I doing that? That was not my job. And I was parenting my mother, a narcissistic mom. She makes every conversation about her. If you try to have a deep conversation, she doesn't celebrate your wins. She can't be happy for you. And she has to be right all the time. Yeah enough said on that, right? So probably you're like, oh yeah, that's my mom. She, she doesn't, they don't want to have deep conversations because they're not really, they're not interested. And I know that that's a harsh thing to think about, but it's so true that they, they just don't have time to worry about anything about you because everything, the whole world revolves around them. Immature moms, they're competitive and jealous and they think that you're picking on them if you um, try to like let them know like, hey, 
why are you getting jealous of it? Like I can remember when we got our second home, which was a brand new home. It was the first brand new home we had ever gotten. And the kids were little and I was so excited about it. And my mom was downright jealous. I could see it in her eyes. I felt it in her body language. She was looking around with like kind of that, you know, that look of like, hmm, okay, great. Good for you. Um, It wasn't this genuine like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Like she didn't say any of that. She was just like, hmm, okay. Like the little little smirks and things, uh, lip smacking, all of that kind of stuff. She didn't want to celebrate with me because she was upset that I had actually done what she had wanted to do, but she had always sabotaged herself to never get to that place. They, she never owned a home. She never stayed with her partner, whoever that was at the time, um, you know, couldn't stay married, all these things. And so she was comparing, comparing, comparing. There's always a little bit of a competition between mothers and daughters. I will say that 100%. Um, I, I see that in my own girls where I'm like, oh man, I wish I would have done that at that age, like that kind of thing. But when it becomes something where you're actually the competition against your daughter, that's when it can become real dangerous and unhealthy. And that has no place in a mother-daughter relationship. As I looked at each of these patterns when I was studying this, I had a story to match every single emotion of these things. I was like, yep, just like the story I told you right now, I was like, yep, she was jealous and competitive. I can remember, you know, like her walking through this new home and just genuinely not being happy for me. And I thought, all I wanted was to be able to share this with you so that you could be like, you did it. like. You did better than me. Good for you. You know, this is great. Like, and I get to share in this with you because I could have opened up my home to her. If my mom had been in a different uh, emotional atmosphere with me, I would have invited my mom to live with us until her dying days. But I couldn't be in a room with her for more than, I mean, really 15 minutes. (laughs) I would stay with her for a few hours, of course. And when I took care of her, I would stay with her. But to to move her in, no, that that would not have happened and it wouldn't have ended well. (laughs) Um, And that was sad to me because I thought this, again, this is a person that you're supposed to love and take care of. And yet there's just nothing loving about her that is even expressing that she cares about me. So you know, if I did better in life, she'd be jealous. If I felt weepy or sad, she would say I was a baby. She could rage all she wanted. But if I did, she threatened to call the police because I'm out of control. I need to go to a facility, like something's going on. And so I learned how to shut down. I mean, I'm really good at just shutting down my emotions. And when I felt uncomfortable or threatened, that's, that was my go-to. And when you have a mother that's a combination of both these traits, the odds are pretty slim that she's going to get better. And those are traits that, that probably started down through the generations. So remember, you don't have to fight the lesser battles. Only fight the battles that God has called you to fight. You won't change her mind if she's set in her own dysfunction. It's not your job to figure that out. You only need to take your power back. No one has the ability to take that power away. Let God define your power. What I mean by that is you're going to start a new thing. You're going to start doing something different than where you've grown up. These moms are selfish because they don't know or they've never learned how to share their love with anyone. And the weird part about our moms or, or the narcissism that they've had or immaturity is that they can be really charming with other people. This blew me away. When I would have other people come up to me and go, oh my gosh, I just love your mom. She's so funny. She's so cute. And I always wanted to respond with like, whose mom are you talking about? (laughs) And then I, I remembered like, 
of course, she does have a sweet spirit for other people. She's putting on a mask. Um, she can be a different personality with them. She's not taking them home. So they don't see the wrath that I'm getting when she comes home. And I can say that as she got older, there was less fight in her. And I did get to see some of her softness. And she was always funny. And so I believe those were gifts. And I tried to just hold on to those and and really know like she has she I'm not saying like she's all evil that's the thing where I think people have such a hard time is like you can't talk about your mom like that I'm like listen she was many things but she was completely immature and she was a narcissist she was also very charming and she was hysterically funny and she was a great cook so I can hold both of those things but I needed to call out the stuff that was harmful that I needed to set a boundary on and set a precedent in our family that that would not come into our family and be a part of our family. Having these uh, two types of personalities gives you a better understanding of why they are, but it's not an excuse for them to continue to abuse you. For most of us, very distinct boundaries are required to save us from continuing heartbreak. Some things that, that you can do to take away from this is don't get in arguments with your mother that you know you're not going to win. That She actually loves the drama. They thrive on drama. Don't give them that. Walking away is fine. And they will, they'll shoot at you. Oh, great. You're going to walk away. Great. Try to do that. They'll call you and be like, I know you're not returning my calls and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they will try all of these manipulative things to pull you back in. If you need a break, you can say, I need a break from you. This is what I'm going to do. And you can stick to that. You are in control. This is your life and your future. Um, I pray that you can find a way to keep working through this and start making change worthy behaviors where you don't get bogged down with your mom's immature, toxic behavior. Make sure that you know that God will, he'll use these hard times to make you more compassionate and he's not going to waste these hard times that you've endured the things that I've gone through that I thought were just like horrific things have been some beautiful things in the future that have been able to make me understand and be compassionate for other people's stories to where I'm not the girl that gets scared by hard stories because I've been through some really hard stories. And so I have seen people who have these really charmed lives. They have beautiful families and I'm, I'm appreciative of that. I don't know what that looks like. I will never know what that feels like. And, you know, you'll start to tell them like some of your life story and they're like, oh, they're horrified. And you're like, okay, you can't handle that. I have found that God has brought some huge compassion in my life and put people in my life because he said, Phyllis, you've walked through this you know this, even if it's not the same story, you understand this pain, you understand this trauma, sit and listen with this person. This person needs you to not judge. And I am able to do that. So I believe that God will use those hard times in your life for something really beautiful. When they talk about beauty from ashes, it's very much what he's saying in that is that our ashes will turn into beauty. Like the, we are, our time isn't wasted because of traumatic, horrible things that have happened to us or things that our moms have done to us. That that's not the end of the story. Don't let it be the end of the story. Know that your immature parents were probably raised by immature parents. So this has to stop with you. You must be the chain breaker in your family. God has given you this assignment. Do it well and show your family that these kinds of behaviors will never happen in your home. My girls can look back and go, man, yeah, I remember when that happened. We, we've we never had that. We've never had that spoken over us, mom. We've never had those things happen to us in that way. Like, wow, like that's, that's really crazy. Like so glad that we didn't have to live through that. So sad that you did. There's an understanding and a beauty there. 
when I look at my daughter who is a mom and they're my grandkids now, I get to see two generations out now. That is a beautiful thing. God didn't waste any part of my story to be like, well, that's, that's the end. Like I live this crappy life and now this is all I get. Like, great. Like, <laughs> you know, who am I? I don't need to ask for anything else. Like I'm just a lowly person. No, you are a child of God. You are a beautiful woman that he wants to crown with glory. And he is telling you, go out and shout that story to the world. He didn't tell the woman at the well, go home. And he told her, don't tell anyone. He knew she wasn't, she was going to tell everybody. (laughs) He knows he's God, right? Jesus told her, just go back into town. Don't tell anyone I was here. He smiled because he knew. (laughs) He was like, "Mm, yeah, she's a woman. She's going to go back and tell. We can't keep our mouth shut. And So, you know, she went back and she could have said like, I'm so embarrassed. Like he told me everything about my life, which is so shameful and so embarrassing. No, she went back shouting to him. He knows everything about my, my crappy life. And he told me this is the living water. Like this is, this is it. Like I get it now. Her eyes were open. She wasn't ashamed. She shouted it to the town and they were like, what in the world happened to Jane? Like, what's going on? I just called her Jane because, you know, I don't know what her name was. But I think that the point is, is when you read those stories, you realize like it doesn't matter what you've gone through in the past. Know that God is going to use that story for good. Hold on to that. I am so sorry that you have a mom that is any of those things. I do understand. And I, I just like, I'm sitting here with you in that pain. It is not good. It's really hard to know that you've had this damaged mom your whole life and, um, mine is gone now. And so I don't have to deal with that on the daily, but if you're still in the midst of that, know that there is an end to that. And, um, and you are in control, even if she throws the biggest fit in the world, know that you are in control to either bring her into your life in little spurts, cut her off completely, or possibly mend some things where the relationship can get better. Either way, in any of those scenarios, I pray the best for you guys and your relationship, but mostly I pray for you to get to a better, healthier place so that if you are a mom, or even if you're not a mom, make your life the best it can be the way God wants you to be. And so that is the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed um, this talk. And until next time, I'll see you later, peeps. Peeps.